Hello, this one's going to be about our dog Abel, um, how we got him, a uh, little bit of backstory there, and my uh, first big black hairy thing encounter out in the, uh, in the woods. Hello. So, this one's, uh, this one's for Abel. Uh, that's funny. Um, just by saying that, I got a little bit worked up. He was a good dog. He was a very good dog. Um, and he represented, you know, a lot of good memories. Now, Abel was a, uh, a Doverman Dalmatian. Uh, he was a purebred dog. You know, he had papers and all that. He was, he was a type dog we would have never been able to have. Because uh, you had to buy him. Uh, most of our dogs, man, they just showed up. You know what I mean? Or... <clears throat> Or somebody we knew, they had puppies, and they were like, here, here's a dog I don't want to feed, you know, you feed it, <clears throat> you know. But these were, uh, he was a, uh, he was a purebred, you know, with papers. And the way we came about it is, um, back then, uh, during winter, work was hard to find, uh, so so my dad would travel back up north to uh, to his old friends, you know, the, the four horsemen I was talking about. Well, uh, two of them still lived up north. And he would go up north sometimes during the winter, and um, he'd, he'd work and all that. Well, uh, one of the, I think how it went is the sister, his friend, or his his friend's wife or his friend's sister I can't remember but one of them didn't have room for uh, the dogs because back then there were two Cain and Abel they were brothers um, so dad was up there working and he was like sure I'll take them you know we live down there in the country they'll be able to run around and enjoy their life and all that you know <clears throat> so um, dad came back uh, he'd always come back with different stuff whenever uh, he'd go up north. Uh, he'd be gone for like two weeks to a month, um, sometimes longer. It would depend on the work. You know, um, he'd send money in the mail and all that. But when he would come back, he would always have like sometimes a different vehicle, you know. Um, so, but it was always loaded up with stuff, you know, uh, so he came back that time, and he, he had them two dogs, and it was really cool, uh, he had a bunch of other stuff, you know, bikes, whatever, but them dogs, man, um, now Kane, uh, Kane was the bigger of the two, um, Abel was maybe like a, a 75 pound dog uh, you know he was he was pure muscle though uh, but Cain was bigger Cain was maybe a 90 pound dog he was he was a very big dog and he was thick and heavy and his bark was uh, way deeper than Abel's um, Cain wound up uh, I believe we gave him away um, he was just too much to feed, you know what I mean, between the two of them. Um, and we wound up keeping Abel. And uh, so Abel was, like I said, 75 pounds, 70, 75 pounds, depending on how much water and food he had drank. Um, he was like, like I was saying though, pure muscle. Um, if he sat, um, he would almost kind of buff up in a way when he would sit and push his uh, elbows in towards his ribs his, his chest um, his shoulders would like 
swell, uh, buff up, they'd bulk up from all the muscles being compressed together. And like he he had pure ripples going down his arms, dude, and in his sides and everything. He he would just run and run and run. And if you combine running through them Kentucky uh, fields and Kentucky hills and Kentucky woods with uh, with drinking that Kentucky water uh, from the Kentucky streams and all that, that dog was he was he had become basically a Kentucky thoroughbred. Um, he was real hardy, uh, real hardy, uh, <clears throat> and a good dog. Usually always had him when I'd go on walks. Um, with the, uh, the big black hairy thing, knowing that that is out there, uh, so the first encounters with it was like during midsummerish, you know? Um, and I started looking out and about and all that stuff, but that ginseng season, uh, was a particular interesting one. Um, knowing that this thing's out in the woods, you know, I, I always kept my eye out now, you know, and, um, one day I was out saying hunting, and this was out towards the, the east side this time, which in a way makes sense because <clears throat> when it crossed the road in front of us you know it went up over the hill and over that fence that would be towards the east uh, of that road it was on the east side of it <clears throat> so I'm out saying hunting on the east side of our of that ridge you know the east side of the road the ridges and hills on the east side is they're they're arranged a little bit different um it's almost like uh, if you drew like a, a series of crow's feet you know with the the middle toe and a toe on each side and you just put them back to back to back to back um that's how those ridges were. You had like a center ridge and then like a fork on each side of that center ridge. And they all forked north on this ridge I'm talking about. And you had like seven ridges on each side of this center ridge. And each one of those seven ridges was uh, like about a, a 300, 400 yard, about a thousand foot uh northern facing ridge so it had it had these nice little saying patches that you know I'd, I'd pick from each year and um, I'm over there hitting these seven ridges so I mean really <clears throat> it had 14 ridges if you combined both sides um, so I'm over there and I'm hitting those and I was on like the third or fourth one and uh, Abel just took off didn't tell him to take off you know I didn't I didn't see anything I didn't hear anything uh, I didn't I didn't really pick up on any reason for him to take off and he wasn't barking or nothing he just took off straight up the ridge which would have been east you know um, <clears throat> I whistled and I called once or twice but you know I was busy so I just kept digging and uh, you know, this is one of those scenarios where, uh, when you're, when you're digging one or two of these plants, you can look around, you know, because when you're, when you're digging, you got to take your time, you move back the mulch layer, you know, you figure out which way the root's going in, you kind of, you kind of brush that dirt back, and you, you almost dig at this root like it's a fossil, um, because you don't want to mess it up you don't want to nick it or anything you want to keep the root like you just removed the dirt you know same thing you you would do with a fossil <clears throat> so when you're digging these roots man um, you got time to look around and generally if you're looking around you can see uh, another saying plant and, and you kind of plan out your route because if you're sitting at if you're digging up one and you see one over there and one over there and one over there um, it's weird how it works um, you got to map it out because if you go to the next one you might not be able to see 
the other ones that you saw when you were at that last one. <clears throat> so you kind of map it out by, uh, by the trees, you know, more so than the actual plant. Um, and then of course when you get, when you get up the, when you get the root out of the ground, um, unless you're patching it up, you would want to put the berries right there where you got the root. And you, you know, you'd pretty much plant the plant you dug up. And then what I'd like to do is put the, uh, the top of the plant on top of where the berries were and then cover that back up with the mulch. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm saying all this cause it takes time, you know? Uh, and he had been gone. He took off when I was kneeling down at, at, at a couple plants and I'd done dug those up and moved on to another set and dug those up and he was still gone and I noticed man the uh the forest had went from bird songs and all that to uh it was kind of still you had the winds blowing around the treetops and the occasional like you know tree on tree type rub but um the woods had gotten pretty quiet <clears throat> I didn't think nothing of it. I paid attention to it, you know, but uh, it wasn't going to slow me down from digging these roots. Uh, it could just be, you know, a pack of coyotes running the ridge. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I had moved on and I kind of got disoriented because the woods got quiet. So I had went back to the prior patch that I had just dug to try and get my you know where am I going next where did I see that and uh <clears throat> coming in from the west dude you just there were there was like 30 40 cattle and they are all just running in a line you know they five ten feet in between each cow and they're running straight straight at me uh, coming up this ridge uh, from the field and I was like you know I I whistle and I jump and I yeah yeah and dude the, the cows did not respond to me um, and they're coming up it's it's one thing to see cows running in a field but to see that many cows coming through the woods up a hill um, something crazy had to spook them dude something something crazy had to spook them cows don't like running cows don't like running in a field cows definitely don't like running in in the woods and cows definitely don't like running uphill in the woods and they were all coming straight at me dude um, <clears throat> so usually you know I'd, I'd stand my ground but nothing was happening here so I, I I jumped onto this one tree and I climbed up and I jumped over here and I climbed up and all these cows just like they went through these woods like uh, a sweeper man they, they were like in a line not a herd and uh, they just were kind of all lined up and moved through like like I said like a almost like a SARS team uh, search and rescue I mean perfectly spaced out and just they went past me like I didn't even exist but they had gotten me up in the tree you know and I'm watching all these cows and I'm just I'm I'm amazed and I'm at I'm at wonder you know I'm just I'm amazed and I'm just wondering what the hell and I'm trying to figure out what could have caused this and I'm looking back down the hill and you just see like that the whole ridge that used to be this nice <laughs> forest with like perfect like foliage and all that dude now it's just been trampled and it's all disturbed like like you know 30 cows just ran through it um, like a 50 yard wide just path of disturbance you know broken branches rolled leaves everything rocks flipped <clears throat> and I'm up I'm up above it and I'm looking around and about like a hundred feet 
uh, to the west of me, just past the edge of the the cow's <clears throat> disturbance line on the ground level, up in the trees, dude. Um, about almost the same height as me in the tree. Uh, I saw what we call the big black hairy thing and he saw me see him and I saw him see me and it like it for as wide and as big as this thing is it like disappeared behind the the tree it was in and that tree uh, wasn't no bigger than maybe you know a 55 gallon drum in diameter <clears throat> where he was on it he disappeared behind it and then you saw like that entire tree top like shift you know you could you could hear it but you could see like the whole tree <laughs> like moved in the woods you know the the top pushed against the canopy and made this like if if <clears throat> if me as a human were to walk up to a tree that was like the size of uh, I don't know like a basketball goal you know the pole uh, you know <clears throat> six inch eight inch diameter tree and if I grabbed it and shook it <clears throat> the way that the top of that tree would sound that's what that tree that was as big as a 55 gallon drum uh, and where it went into the ground it was probably the size of uh, two of those you know but where he was it was the size of one but I, I'm, I'm guessing he kicked off of it because it was like that tree shook then another tree shook then another tree shook then another tree shook um, I heard it I saw the trees but I didn't see it going from tree to tree uh, I only had like a, the visual representation and the audible sounds of what should have been happening but I didn't see the cause of it if, if that makes any sense and uh, I was kind of like frozen there man um, you know uh, it took me maybe 15 20 minutes before I had made a decision to do anything uh, uh, I couldn't really recall I couldn't really tell you what what's made me sit there so long like what was going through my head um, it was just like this I, I say it a lot but it was like this twilight zone of what did I see um, where am I at? What am I going to do? Um, but a lot of it was what did I see? It's just this processing of what did I see, you know? Uh, and of course, <clears throat> I knew where I was and how far from the house I was, and Abel was nowhere to be seen. And I was too, uh, I, I was kind of so locked up, I didn't even want to call him, you know? But, um, I'd say it was 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, and I finally, I started moving. Uh, I had shifted around and kind of made it to where I could stand up on the branch I was on, and I started calling Abel. And, uh, it was like the second or third whistle, you know, he replied. I guess the sound had to travel. I guess the sound had to travel through the ridges to reach him uh, and then of course it had to travel from him back to me uh, so he could he could have replied on the first whistle but it just took so long you know what I mean um, and about like 10 minutes later he was you know running through the woods and he was he was to me uh, and I, I got down out of the tree you know I, I walked over where all those cows had been was just it was amazing to see in the woods um, 
so much of the earth had been disturbed I couldn't help but look around at stuff um, and they had trampled several uh, younger ginseng plants that I was gonna leave for later you know what I mean uh, these cows had, had just killed them like the tops I of course I, I I pulled the leaves and everything back over top of them in hopes that the roots uh, would would survive but I walked around through um, where the cows had had ran for maybe the better part of an hour <clears throat> there was a there was a, a pretty good apprehension to want to go over towards where I saw the big black hairy thing you know but curiosity eventually got me and uh, I went over there and of course there was no no tracks on the ground you know but I went over there uh, to see the tree and I, I'm not even sure if I went to the right tree or not you know I I kept looking back and trying to align where I was and all that but yeah I, I went to the tree I thought he had been in or it had been in and uh, you know I pushed on it I could not make that top move at all um, it was almost like a I don't know like a 30 or a 40 ton like a, a caterpillar d9 dozer hit that tree dude that's how much it shook because um, me as a human I, I couldn't make that tree I couldn't even make a leaf uh, shiver you know what I mean and whatever this thing was when it kicked off of it it moved that top of that tree a good foot and a half to three and a half four feet man I mean it, it moved that tree with some uh, some good force and uh, so you know I got able I, I checked out the tree uh, I checked out where the cows were uh, it was getting later in the day so <clears throat> I worked my way back down to the center of the cattle path and I followed that out of the woods and uh, where they had come from you could see that 50 yard wide path of cattle tracks going all the way up that next hill out in the field and what was weird is they they went from being like 50 yards wide to before the top of that hill um, you could tell they were like uh, they were herded up um, all them cows were running in a line no wider than 10 feet up until the top of that ridge and then they came down that ridge and they just slowly spread out to that that sweeper line and then they went into the woods like that you know I thought that was weird like I was trying to understand how and what and everything like it, it was just weird and uh, I wound up walking you know getting home and explaining all this to everybody and you know it just it didn't make no sense but that was the uh, that was my first encounter with the uh, the big black hairy thing uh, out in the woods and uh, so this part here uh, I'm working on getting my patreon up and going there there's a whole bunch of different stuff to learn when it comes to uh, doing all this stuff man and um, you got to bear with me and I've got a learning curve but I, I usually am a fast learner and uh, as part of that um, I'm gonna show you the patreon members names and they are right here I hope you enjoyed this content thumbs up and like comment and share um, subscribe if you already hadn't subscribed that'd be cool um, and hit that notification uh, bell
Thanks.